Magpies like shiny things. They'll land on your windowsill. They'll steal rings and necklaces off your desk. They'll use it to feather their nest. They'll also steal tinsel off your Christmas tree. Tonight, I'll be sharing superstitions about jewelry and a short history of wedding rings. It is really quite fascinating. Did you know that Romans used pig entrails to find a propitious wedding date? Did you know that diamond, diamonds were thought to be splinters from falling stars or tears of the gods? And Romans wore diamonds in amulets and on their armor to protect them and give them courage. Knights used to give the gift of pearls to be a remembrance for their loved ones. Unfortunately, so many of them were dying that that remembrance equated death and tears with pearls. So pearls, unfortunately, fell way out of favor because. Rulers and royalties planned many ill-planned campaigns, causing much death, misfortune, and tragedy. They needed to scapegoat someone besides themselves, so they blamed witches and witchcraft. Diamonds were thought to protect from witchcraft and enchantment and became the new gift that knights gave. In medieval times, ladies were said to mostly go insane when their men were traveling. Diamonds at the time were thought to clarify the mind, so the men started giving the gift of diamonds to ward off insanity to their wives or girlfriends or both. Diamond dust was thought to be on the tip of Cupid's arrows. Did you know that rain on your wedding day is considered good luck in the Hindu tradition? And if you have a sapphire in your wedding ring, long time ago, that signified marital happiness for life. Snake rings with ruby eyes were popular in Victorian England. Those winding coils were said to symbolize eternity. Those Victorians were quite unusual in their jewelry taste. Going into the history of wedding rings, it was thought that Cro-Magnon man probably braided reeds and grasses into rings and anklets to capture a mate. Old shells with holes in them have been found with sinew in old Cro-Magnon sites, suggesting necklaces. In the 2800 BCs, the Egyptians wore their wedding rings on the fourth finger of the left hand. They thought that a vein went straight to the heart. They called it the vena amoris, or vein of love, that started the tradition of wearing wedding rings on that finger. Pliny the Elder said that Roman grooms didn't wear a ring. The wife got two rings, gold for ceremonial purposes and iron to signify his ownership of her and for her to wear at home while slopping the pigs, raising his kids, and cleaning his house. In Asia and Middle East, during that same time, sultans and sheikhs were rich with extra money, and they expressed their wealth by buying more and more girls and women to be their multiple wives. Each wife wore a different puzzle ring, kind of as an inventory. Bishop Durant stopped the heathenish symbolism used on rings and said that the wedding ring was a symbol of the union of the heart and couldn't talk about tree gods and such like. In the United Kingdom, it was so important to marry that poor men rented rings for the ceremony. Some Jewish jewelers made fanciful castles and temple rings, one to two inches tall. Some small towns pooled their money and bought one so that each couple in the town would get married and the bride would use that same ring for the ceremony and then wear a plain gold band afterwards. The first recorded use of an engagement ring was the ring from Archduke Maximilian to Mary of Burgundy. She was two years old, theoretically, at the time. The ring had flat diamond spelling the letter M. The tradition was continued by royalty and the middle class thereafter. The, um, posy rings were very popular in England. They were engraved with flowers and flowery sayings, and they were symbols of love. Romantic, friendship, and parental love were all welcome with posy rings. The Puritans, however, did not 
like all these fripperies, and they would give their wife a thimble. How very useful of them. However, their wives got the last laugh. They cut the top off and wore it as a wedding ring. Those Puritans. <laughs> Regard rings were very popular with the so sentimental Victorians. This was a ring where the first letter of each gemstone was used to spell out a word, and the words were always very romantic and full, full of love. Gimmel rings were used where the man would wear one half, the woman would wear the other half, and when they got married, he took his off, gave it to her, and there, ever after, she would wear the two rings together for life. The double ring ceremony was popularized during and after World War II. Men really wanted to wear a wedding ring to keep the loneliness at bay and to give them strength and remind them of the love back home. After World War II, 80% of couples married with a his and her double ring ceremony. Today, rings could mean just love or anything you want them to. Through history, they meant they could mean ownership, inventory, friendship, or love beyond this life. The next time you give a ring, give it with a message. You are part of the historical arc of giving of rings. 